This is Dr. Lauren Lownan uh, from the Keene State College Department of Biology, continuing the lecture from my genetics class, addressing the modification to Mendelian ratios, relations, and ranking of alleles. We just finished talking about um, the codominance example with the ABO blood grouping system. Now I'm going to talk about um, an allelic series, lethal genes, and pleiotrophy. So what is an allelic series? An allelic series is a set of different mutant alleles of the same gene that cause a range of phenotypes, whereby each one carries a single point mutation within different regions of the same gene. Let's think of an example, or let's consider an example. So a really classic example that we see in the animal world is a coat coloring example, and this ties into earlier content that you have learned or should have learned about um, albinism. So we learned earlier about the enzyme tyrosinase and how it is essential in converting the amino acid tyrosine to the pigment melanin. And that doesn't just apply to humans, it's also seen in other animals. So if we assign the symbol C to the gene that encodes tyrosinase, then um, what we see in the world of tyrosinase alleles, or C alleles, is that there are several different possible mutant alleles. So the common symbolism is to say big C, which is fully dominant over all of the other alleles and results in the, when expressed, results in the production of a fully functional tyrosinase that is able to produce lots of melanin, and we see that in fully colored or pigmented rabbits, as shown here on the left. There's also an allele called chinchilla, and the, the um, uh, symbol for that is little c and then a, a superscript ch for chinchilla and they that re results in a, um, a tyrosinase enzyme that is partially active and you get even distribution of a little bit of pigment and they look a little bit silvery or pale another allele that is known is called the himalayan allele and that is shown with the symbol little c and superscript h and that's a really interesting mutant form because what it results in is a tyrosinase that is temperature sensitive. So it's only fully active when it's cool. And that's why we see in rabbits that are showing the phenotype associated with that allele, we see pigment in the ears and in the nose region and in their little paws. And those are the cooler parts of the body. So as this organism is growing and developing, the only place where it has active, fully active tyrosinases is in its extremities. And everywhere else where it's warmer, the tyrosinase is not working as well, so you get less or no melanin produced. Now the albino phenotype, which we've looked at and thought about before in the context of humans, that's an allele that's just given the symbol lowercase c. And that encodes um, a tyrosinase that is completely inactive, so it's a loss of function mutation. Now there's a ranking for dominance in these alleles, in these four alleles, and it's shown here in bold. So the uppercase fully functional tyrosinase gene is fully dominant to all others, and the lowercase albino allele is fully recessive to all others. Where it gets interesting is the um, chinchilla and the Himalayan alleles, and this is their relationship relative to one another. So you'll see chinchilla somewhat overplaying the role of Himalayan, for example. Let's look at an example of a cross involving um, these kinds of rabbits with these alleles and what you get as a result. So here we've got an example of a cross where we're mating a true breeding chinchilla with a true breeding Himalayan, and that's the parental generation. And the result is F1 that are heterozygous for chinchilla and Himalayan alleles. Okay, and if you let them mate together, then what you get is the F2 generation. And this is pretty cool because when we look, we've got homozygotes for chinchilla and homozygotes for Himalayan, and that phenotype plays out the way that it should. But the heterozygous chinchilla and um, Himalayan, chinchilla and Himalayan, again, looks like what we saw in the F1 and we're getting a little bit of both. The chinchilla uh, sort of patterning or coloring in the middle 
and some of the Himalayans showing up in the extremities. So that's really a novel phenotype. This is one gene, normally in Mendelian um, F2 generations, you'd see a 3 to 1 phenotype ratio. Here we're seeing a 1 to 2 to 1 phenotype ratio, the appearance of a novel phenotype, this, this sort of blended phenotype here. And that's an example of an allelic series. So if you understood that example, then you should be able to take a moment and use a Punnett square to depict the result of crossing a true breeding, full color rabbit, big C, big C, with a rabbit that's showing both chinchilla and Himalayan color, C, C, H, C, H, okay? And you should be able to also think about the question, would the phenotypes of the offspring, all of the different offspring possible, be different if the rabbits were raised under very, very warm conditions? Think about that and write those answers out. Be expected to be able to discuss them in class or perhaps to see them on an exam. Let's move on to the concept of lethal mutations. So a lethal allele is a mutant allele that is fatal in homozygotes. Most lethal alleles are recessive. These are obviously not alleles that are selected for and they're not out there in high abundance in most natural populations. Another thing to think about is the idea that in organisms where we do see multicellular life forms that are haploid, i.e. the gametophyte stage in plants, which you've learned about in class before, you would then um, be able to detect lethal alleles very quickly because they wouldn't be masked in any way by other alleles. Another way to spot the presence of uh, lethal alleles is that you do a cross and there's an entire missing class of phenotypes in the diploid organisms at some particular life stage. So let's look at an example of this, the agouti example. So there's a gene that all animals possess that's called the agouti gene. And the most um, clearly detectable phenotype associated with the agouti gene is that in wild type organisms we see what is called agouti coloring and that's this here it's this sort of banding pattern this has been really well studied in mice so I have mouse pictures and mouse examples for you but it is a gene that humans also have if you've got the wild type agouti allele then and you're a mouse you're gonna show this banded pattern and this is what a mouse would actually look like that kind of modeling if you're showing yellow hair color then you're lacking, you have a different allele, you have the yellow version of the agouti gene, and you'll see no banding in the hair um, follicle or hair shaft. So what's interesting is if you have a heterozygote that is yellow, so you've got the wild type agouti allele, and it's got no superscript, but just imagine it's wild type or plus, and it's got the yellow allele, and you're going to get a yellow mouse as a, as a result. And then you've got, you're mating it with another of the same genotype. And then this is the product that you would see. All right, these are the potential offspring that you would see. When you do those matings, what you see are homozygotes for the wild type agouti gene, and you see yellow mice that are heterozygous which shows us that the yellow allele, in fact, is dominant to the wild type of Goody allele. And then what you will never see is homozygotes for the yellow allele of the agouti gene. That's a missing phenotype class. So this is missing. It's not a mistake that that's empty, right? So rather than seeing a typical 3 to 1 ratio, what you'll see in the offspring is a, a, a 1 to 2 ratio. A third of them will be homozygous wild type agouti, and then two-thirds of them will be heterozygotes and they'll show up as yellow. So that missing phenotype class is what clues us in that the yellow allele of the agouti gene is a lethal allele. So we know a little bit about the molecular biology that underlies those phenotypes. We know that the agouti gene, which has a promoter associated with it, lies just downstream of a gene for a protein called Rally, and it also has its own promoter. The Rally protein is, is necessary for mouse embryonic development, and it also contributes to the production of a little bit of yellow pigment. It's a pretty complex gene, in fact, that I won't get into further here. What we know is that in wild-type agouti, um, when you've got the wild-type agouti gene, 
then you then you've got um, the rally gene present and you've got the regular agouti gene promoter in the yellow agouti allele what has happened is there's been a rather massive deletion the entire rally gene is gone and so is the promoter normally associated with the agouti gene remember what happens at promoters that's where rna polymerase binds in order to express genes you should you should remember that stuff so what happens in this yellow allele is the rally promoter is actually connected to the agouti gene and the rally gene is not produced so there's no rally protein which affects mouse embryonic development and you get this really high level of yellow pigment because the rally promoter is utilized a little bit more to turn on the agouti gene more than it would have been in the normal wild type scenario. The agouti gene is a really great example of something called pleiotrophy as well. It's a kind of a, a fun word, but pleiotrophy is the alteration of multiple phenotypes through a mutation to a single gene. And the agouti gene is a great example of that. So one of the things that we know about the agouti gene is that what allele you have of the agouti gene affects what are called the methylation patterns in the mouse genome. A while earlier in class, I talked about how DNA can have um, functional groups added to it. Some of those functional groups can be methyl groups, CH3s. And there are um, enzymes that take care of methylation, and the agouti gene product influences those enzymes. So how your genome is methylated influences gene expression, which influences your phenotype to a significant degree. What we know about yellow mice, which are all heterozygotes, they're, they've got the yellow allele and they've got the wild type allele, is that they are very obese and they're prone to diabetes and cancer. So they have multiple phenotypes because they have one particular form of one single gene. So if you look at this picture here, there's a wild type mouse and there's a yellow mouse. So this mouse is heterozygous for the agouti yellow allele and the wild type allele. And that's not an exaggeration, that's a common pattern. These little guys tend to be really obese, they get diabetes, they get a lot of different cancers, and they just generally suffer from ill health. So um, that is an example, the agouti gene is an example that has multiple phenotype effects um, when it is in, present in, in different mutant forms, and that's what pleiotrophy is. All right, and that concludes this lecture. I will see you in class.